Good day, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Baxter bringing to you your social studies lesson on the theme National Heroes and their contribution to national development. Today we're going to look at George William Gordon and Paul Bogle. And that's the Right Honorable George William Gordon and the Right Honorable Paul Bogle. Here is an image of George William Gordon, the Right Honorable George William Gordon and what he would have looked like then. And here also is an image of the Right Honorable Paul Bogle. Now guys, this is a picture of Governor Edward Eyre. He's a very important figure to our discussion in this session and we are going to be talking about Governor Eyre some more in the coming slides. I just wanted you to get a look at Governor Eyre by observing this picture. George William Gordon was born in 1820 at Cherry Garden Estate. He was a businessman. He owned several properties. He was also a magistrate and politician. Paul Bogle, on the other hand, was born October 24, 1820, in the parish of St. Thomas. He was a peasant farmer who owned 200 hectares of land. He was a Baptist deacon and a political activist. Now guys, you might be wondering what was the connection between George William Gordon and Paul Bogle? Well, they were, they were really connected in many ways and we're going to explore how. They were both religious leaders. As a matter of fact, George William Gordon had a church in which Paul Bogle was a deacon. They were both eligible to vote because both of them owned property, they owned land. And in those times, you only could vote if you were a landowner and land was very expensive. But of course, only few blacks could actually own land and therefore vote. The church had stepped in to try to buy land and sell it in parcels to blacks. And that would have been what the free village movement was about. But we're not going to be delving into that in this lesson. But we are only saying that very few blacks would have been eligible to vote because they, for the most part, they didn't own land. Both George William Gordon and Paul Bogle wanted to see an improvement in the lives of the peasants who were largely poor, they were suffering, and they wanted them to be represented in politics. They wanted their issues to be heard and to be addressed. Now, we're going to look at leadership of Jamaica in 1865. What was it like? Jamaica was then a colony of Britain. And Governor Edward John Eyre was placed on the island to oversee the political affairs of the island. As we said before, persons with land were allowed to vote and the local assembly, which was a political body in the different parishes, represented only the interests of the white land owners. And of course, that means that the peasants who were blacks 
were not represented. It means that the things that affected them were not being addressed. Issues such as their land, access to land, and issues of high taxes, these are the things that affected them and they were not addressed. And we are going to look closer at that. Now, in 1865, there were a number of things happening that resulted in the Morant Bay Rebellion. A lot of things came together to bring about heightened frustration and suffering. There was drought between 1863 and 1865 and we know that a lot of persons would have been left hungry because the majority of persons earned their living from farming. Now, the American Civil War was also taking place and that led to food shortages and high costs for goods that were imported. Wages were low and taxes were high. Now guys, we already mentioned that the interests of the peasants were not being represented in the local assembly. And of course, the local assembly would consist of whites who were wealthy and middle, middle class, landowners as well. And of course, their interest was not the interest of the peasants, right? And the peasants could not vote, so they had very limited or no representation and there was also shortage of land on which they are to farm and the majority of them farmed for their livelihood now guys we're looking at what caused the people of St. Thomas to become angry to become militant Governor Ear constantly ignored the problems of the peasants. Persons who controlled the affairs in the parish of St. Thomas in the East, such as the Costas, Kettleholt, and Reverend Cook, they had no sympathy for the peasants and the hardships that they were going through. Now, guys, of course, the peasants would have become angry, would have become militant, for a reason and we're going to look closely at them they were hungry and as we said there was a drought they were hungry laws were passed to prevent them from improving their lives from gaining access to land on which they could farm and they were frustrated because no one was tending to their needs Now, boys and girls, we're going to look at the courageous and selfless actions of George William Gordon and Paul Bogle to help the peasants in this situation. And bear in mind that George William Gordon, he was colored. He was a mixed person, mixture of black and white parentage, and he was wealthy. Now, Paul Bogle was not wealthy but he had land some amount of land so he had an opportunity to vote and with this power this limited power paul bogle tried his best to represent the peasants by seeking to meet with the governor here but of course paul bogle could not do it alone with his vote because he would need a majority of persons who had the same interest and he, as he and George William Gordon did to be able to make an impact in government in order for the assembly to attend to the plight of the peasants. And a lot of persons were not interested in the hardships that the peasants faced. Bogle also attended courthouse sessions to support blacks who were largely sentenced unfairly. Both 
Paul Bogle and George William Gordon spoke out publicly against the suffering that the peasants were facing and they were both critics of the actions of Governor Edward Eyre and of course that would have made them very unpopular among the, the whites who were there in the island locally as well as among the politicians. Now we're going to zoom in on the Morant Bay Rebellion of 1865 boys and girls. Paul Bogle went to the Morant Bay Courthouse to support two men who were being tried there to prevent the arrest of a man. He was also implicated in wrongdoing because a man shouted in the courthouse in protest of what was happening the ruling in the courtroom the man shouted in protest and Paul Bogle prevented that arrest along with his followers and immediately Paul Bogle became a target because he was thought of as obstructing justice Police tried to arrest Paul Bogle when he returned to Stony Gut, but they failed. Now, remember that we discussed that Paul Bogle had gone to Spanish Town to see the governor here, but was refused an audience with him. The governor refused to meet with him. And Bogle led his followers again back to the courthouse when a vestry meeting was taking place to represent the peasants and express the dissatisfaction with how they were being treated. Now, soldiers fired on the demonstrators and killed 20 of them. The survivors among the rioters forced the guards into the courthouse and set it on fire, killing 16 men, including the Costas, Baron Kettleholt. Now guys, this is really a picture of what would have transpired on that day, that fateful day at the courthouse. A total of 51 prisoners were set free on that day from the courthouse. Governor Eyre ordered troops to punish the rebels. Houses were burnt, persons were killed or whipped. There was devastation. Paul Bogle was arrested and executed on October 24th, 1865 for his involvement in the Morant Bay Rebellion as ordered by Governor Eyre. George William Gordon was also executed because of his affiliation to Paul Bogle and because he supported the plights of the peasants and was also a part of the Baptist church which was largely comprised of blacks. And he was hung in October 23rd, 1865. Governor Edward Eyre was dismissed and sent back to London to provide an explanation for his ruthless actions and a commission of inquiry was established. Now, those who died did not die in vain as the living conditions of the peasants were improved based on the findings of the commission of inquiry. The justice system was also improved so that all persons could be tried fairly. Now, Boys and girls, we're going to look at ways in which we honored Paul Bogle and George William Gordon. There is a monument of Paul Bogle in front of the courthouse. And of course, we know that there are monuments of all our national heroes in the National Heroes Park. Now, of course, Garden House is named after our hero George William Gordon. There is an image of Gordon House there for you in Kingston. 
both George William Gordon and Paul Bogle were proclaimed as Jamaican national heroes at a ceremony in Morant Bay in 1969. Now guys, for additional reading, please go to Living Together by Bell Coates and Jamaica Living Together in Society by Brown Winslet Dunn. Now guys, we are down to your activity session. I want you to write a letter to the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports in which you suggest three additional ways in which you think that George William Gordon and Paul Bogle can be honored as heroes of Jamaica. Please send your letter to genstudies one culture at gmail.com. Please remember to place your name on your response, your letter, your name, your class, and your teacher, and your subject as well. Now, boys and girls, we have come to the end of our presentation, and as usual, I want to leave a few tips with you. Please remember to wash your hands. Wear a mask if you have to go outdoors and remember to wash your hands when you get back inside. Please keep safe. Goodbye.